name's Mike. Uh, I am illustrating currently for Dawn of the Unread. I started illustrating when I was at college, uh, almost 17 years ago, and then continued to do it through university, and then as a freelancer for about 15 years. The most challenging thing, I think, about being an illustrator is probably working out how everything's laid out. It's like a big jigsaw puzzle. So somebody will give you sometimes a random idea or just a key bit of dialogue and then it's your responsibility to sort of piece it together and visualise it into a, hopefully, a nice bit of art that works for the reader. The most bizarre thing I've had to draw, um, everything I draw I think is really bizarre. I can't think of anything that's not. Um, two weeks ago I was drawing a cat and a mouse on a tandem and this weekend I was drawing zombies of eating, eating burgers, so everything is just bizarre to me. Well, for Dawn of the Unread, I sat down and we talked to several people and we really wanted something which was like the old Tales of the Crypt comics, if you've ever seen them. Like really old, almost rough printed, kind of pulp fiction, so a lot of base colours, a lot of thick line and, yeah, kind of trashy 1940s, 10 cent comic book stuff. When looking for a colourist, uh, again, when looking for anyone that's going to add to your work, I really need to find someone that I trust. So, Confetti gives me a, a unique opportunity, because we teach, on a games course, we teach 2D art as well, to see maybe about 30 or 40 artists a year, develop themselves and turn out what is essentially professional work. So I'm kind of in a great place because I get to pick who I think is the best and then give them a chance to uh, do commercial work. I tend not to draw on paper at all anymore. Uh, if my laptop isn't charged then I have, a, <laughs> I have a sketchbook in my bag and that's what I use. Uh, but this is, this is my office. So my office is a graphics tablet and a stylus and a laptop. And that's, that's all I use for everything I do, from animating to CGI to 2D art. It's all just here. So I'll get a script and then I'll just sit down with a few cups of tea and sketch it all out. Uh, and with a variety of different programs, from Illustrator to Photoshop to Manga Studio to Paint or Sci, uh, the programs, uh, the software doesn't really bother me that much as long as it's fast. So for Dawn of the Unread, I'm using Manga Studio. Uh, and that's because I know that I can really pound out the pages without running into any limitations or any formatting issues. Like if I was using Photoshop, it would be a long-winded process. The same end result, but just the workflow and the pipeline would be faster on the software. I work on a lot of different projects. Uh, I guess when I was freelancing, I was really trying to make, uh, make a buck. So I branched out. Uh, the reason why I'm teaching here is because I started doing uh, 3D work, through uh, 3D models and 3D animated logos for TV and film. So I used to do a lot of advertising work for people uh, like well, just ad companies. And then I moved over and started doing storyboards for spool, for corporate gigs, short films, music videos. And after doing a lot of really nice work that I didn't really believe in, I decided that I'd had enough. And I, right now I'm just doing projects which I really like. So at the moment I'm doing Dad Town, which is a really nice labour of love, uh, which is a full-blown graphic novel. So after over a decade in the industry doing things which were really, here is the project, you've got 24 hours to complete it. It feels really nice to do something now, which is you've got six months to do whatever you want, and at the end of it you still get paid. That's much nicer for me. Illustration definitely dom dominates my life 100%, which is kind of really bad. So I'll get up in the morning and I'll come to work 
and I'll do my stretch at work and go home around about six o'clock and then I'll do another eight hours of illustrating and then I'll go to bed. So, and that's every day. Um, which sounds really bad now I think about it. But uh, I, I, do, I do sometimes have days off and times to go outside to see the real world. But if you're juggling illustrating or whatever you're doing with a full-time job, then it doesn't really leave much time to do anything else. So the full-time work I do here at Confetti is lovely, and I loved it, and it pays the bills. Uh, but I, I want something a bit more artistic, so I've had to cobble another secret life on top of that, which is the artwork that I love. Well, one of the reasons why I'm really happy and excited about this project is because, one, it gets me a chance to get some really creative and talented new blood to actually get something produced that the world will see. Uh, new confetti students getting their work out in the public domain is kind of what we're all about. And also, it's a, it's a great topic for us. I mean, I myself know I'm an avid reader. I can't go to bed unless my mind is sidetracked by something. So I have to read a book, whether that be a graphic novel or a hardback. I'm a, I'm a little bit of a bookaholic. My whole house is dedicated to print-based media, basically. Posters and books and comic books and graphic novels. And I think that everyone should have that. Although it's weird, I don't draw on paper anymore. I do read a hell of a lot of print-based stuff. And I think that's really important. If kids aren't reading that, if nobody's going to bookshops, if no one's buying any comics and reading them, if it's all online and it's all digital, then I think we've missed something. Sort of a connection with what the actual art is. Which is a solid state substance. Art shouldn't be something totally ephemeral. It shouldn't be something really diaristic. It should be something which is set in stone and a bit of a legacy, an external memory device.